to good day to all my viewers out there i'm back again to continue with musculoskeletal disorders especially among the elderly people because it's more prevalent among the elderly people anything from 45 50 70 years and above so how do we manage it with so much musculoskeletal disease the disease of the bone the muscles and the tendons and at this age it gets worse because they lose uh, 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 the, the, the nutrients stored in the bone, the calcium is being lost. That is what we call sarcopenia. So at this uh, uh, period, they need to increase their calcium intake. The calcium intake should be up to 1,300 to 1,400 uh, milligram of calcium and 20 microgram of vitamin D. And then the protein should be 0 0.8 gram of protein per body weight. With this combination, the elderly person uh, musculoskeletal disorder can be maintained <coughs> and prevented, then the, the elderly person can uh, participate in many physical activities, especially moving around to prevent other disease conditions. So what are the food rich in calcium? So many foods are very rich in calcium. Green leafy vegetables are very rich in calcium. Fish, seafood like crawfish and fish are very rich in calcium. Beans and other legumes are very rich in calcium. Milk and milk products are very high in calcium. And then uh, eggs are very high in calcium. Cereals, like grains, some of them are very high in calcium. But it's not just them high in calcium that's the problem. In diabetes, when you measure the, uh, the amount of food to give this calcium, you top it with vitamin D rich food because without vitamin D, the calcium will not be absorbed into the bone for proper bone uh, maintenance. And, and protein, if it's not enough, it will not lead to proper bone formation. So we increase that person's vitamin D intake, that up to 20 uh, micrograms of vitamin D. We can get it from fish and we can also get it from other fatty food, especially good fat. We need to avoid trans fat and saturated fat, they are not good. So with this combination, still, uh, how we sure the vitamin D and calcium are properly absorbed? We have to check the food that are very high in oxalate. Oxalate is a compound. We call it oxalic acid, a kind of phytochemical found in some plants, which is not good for to manage people with uh, musculoskeletal disorder because it prevents the absorption of calcium. It binds with calcium in the digestive system and then flush it out through feces. So we have food that are very high in oxalate. Example, food like spinach. You know, we advise people to go for green leafy vegetables, but please, we should avoid spinach of any type. We can go for pumpkin leaves, they are very low in oxalate and good in calcium. Our guava leaves, kuka, is very low in uh, oxalate and very high in calcium. Water leaves have moderate oxalate, with which we can remove through cooking or blanching. We have so many food. So with this, we have to be very careful not to combine foods that have oxalate and our calcium food. Otherwise, you keep managing and you will not see positive results. Even if you give that person all the calcium rich food, and then since there's addition of food that have oxalic acid, it will not be absorbed. That bone problem will continue. Then, fatty, uh, that or fatic acid, like most of our cereals have fatic acid, whole grains they have fatty acid. So, the fiber intake of the elderly person should be as low as 20 milligrams of fiber, or even lower than that. So, that in order not to it combined with uh, calcium and then flush away. We need that calcium. So that mistake of we, you know, um, some medical personnel telling elderly people to eat a lot of food that has high fiber. No, high fiber is not too good for the elderly one, moderate, so that it can help for bowel movement and then it can help to retain calcium and vitamin D, even iron for proper bone formation. So I will stop here. I will then continue with the dietary management again for musculoskeletal disorder. Don't forget to subscribe, don't forget to like and share. I'm dietitian Aisha to Yusuf. Aisha Nutri Diet. Thank you very much. Um, welcome back. I'll continue with uh, the dietary management of musculoskeletal disorder in order to maintain the calcium absorption and vitamin D and protein for bone formation, especially among the elderly people, I 
uh, put more emphasis on the elderly people because it's more prevalence among the elderly people. If it happens at the younger age, it can be you know, maintained or prevent or cure before they get to elderly stage. So I concentrate more among the elderly people. Then uh, we talk about calcium rich food and food that can prevent calcium from being absorbed, even if that person takes enough calcium. Have you know, there's a very big mistake where people ask uh, elder people to go for herbal tea, like taking cinnamon tea, turmeric tea. You no, know, teas like that are very, very high in oxalic, oxalic acid. So they don't need to use turmeric, they don't need to cinnamon. They should go for garlic. Garlic has good phytochemicals that prevent binding of calcium and allow proper uh, absorption of calcium. They should also take their green tea. When I say green tea, not package processed green tea. Green tea can be from using your lemongrass and then prepare your green tea and put a little mint leaf in it and then this green tea you have for the absorption of uh, calcium. They should avoid the intake of coffee, especially caffeinated coffee. It prevents the absorption of calcium. They should not take alcohol. Alcohol prevents absorption of calcium. They should also not eat too much meat because meat has purine, which will lead to accumulation of a, an acid called uric acid in the bones, especially the joints that leads to severe pain. All this should be avoided. They should avoid high fatty food, saturated food, because it will not give room for proper absorption of calcium. That's why the vitamin D need fat for absorption. We can go for good oil like olive oil and omega-3 fatty acid and a good with some vegetable oils that are very in you know, omega-3 fatty acids for proper absorption. Not going for saturated or trans fat. It will prevent absorption of calcium. Then, uh, apart from all this reason, one should be very careful. The elderly person should be having enough time to rest because stress also leads to the uh, low secretion of um, uh, hydrochloric acid within the stomach. You know, it's part of the component of the stomach juice, hydrochloric acid. And this hydrochloric acid will change the pH level of the stomach, making the stomach a little bit acidic and then lead to proper absorption of calcium. So if there's low production of hydrochloric acid, there's going to be low production, uh, low absorption of calcium, which can then, that means the, the maintainer of the bones will be very low or the musculoskeletal disease uh, disorder will not be managed. The reason why I also emphasize on we concentrating on taking care of our bones, the bones is the framework, is the frame that holds every system in our body, is the frame that holds our digestive system, the frame that holds our productive system, the frame that holds our respiratory system, our circulatory system, even the brain is all by the skull, it's all bones. The, the sight by the skull, the teeth by the, you no, know, everything is bone. If bones and muscles and tendons are not maintained, there's going to be problem. There's going to be poor level of energy expenditure because there's not going to be high level of physical activity. Mobility will be low. That person cannot move properly. If there's low mobility, automatically there's going to be very low energy expenditure. That means the person cannot burn out excess fat, calories, or toxins that are accumulated in the body. If this happens, it leads to obesity. Then obesity, accumulation of excess toxin and fat that will pass through the arteries where the blood flow, which can also lead to cardiovascular disease, end of the heart disease. And also if this happens with excess fat accumulated in the body, it will affect the production of insulin, which can lead to diabetes. That means without proper care of the bones, all other disease conditions can follow. In order to prevent cardiovascular disease, to prevent respiratory disease, to prevent uh, uh, obesity and diabetes, then we should take care of our bones to be strong so that we have proper mobility, proper physical activity, proper energy expenditure, and then we remain fit and keep fit and strong. We should eat healthy and keep fit. I'm dietitian Aisha to yourself. I shall not that. Please don't forget to share, don't forget to subscribe and like. I'll continue on musculoskeletal disorder in my next video. Thank you very much.